and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John, and today we're going to continue 50 years of horror fiction with the year 1999. You know, the one Prince sang about, you know, 2000 zero, zero. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. I don't need to be doing that. Anyway, I got five books here for you guys. So, what do we got first? We have got The Sub, and this is by Thomas M. Dish. The Sub, the fourth novel in Thomas M. Dish's Supernatural Minnesota series, which uses different supernatural horrors to satirize modern America, focuses on Diana Turney, and a substitute teacher in the town of Leech Lake, Minnesota, left to care for her niece after her sister is in prison for the attempted murder of her philandering husband. Haunted by her father's ghost and disturbing repressed memories, Diana discovers she has the power to turn people into their animal totems and proceeds to transform locals into an array of creatures from spiders to pigs. Diana, her cruelty growing in proportion to her power, dismisses a warning from her father's ghost that she is destined to kill everyone she loves and continues on a spree of violence and mayhem. And that is The Sub, and that is by Thomas M. Dish. Uh, some of the other ones that I've talked about in the Supernatural Minnesota series were The M.D. and uh, The Priest, I believe it was called. I, there is a fourth, third book. I don't remember what the third book is. I don't think I covered it. Uh, if I didn't, I apologize for that. But anyway, that is uh, The Sub by Thomas M. Dish. Okay, next up we have got The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. And this is by Stephen King. What if the woods were full of them? And of course they were. The woods were full of everything you didn't like. Everything you were afraid of and instinctively loathed. Everything that tried to overwhelm you with nasty, no-brain panic. The brochure promised a moderate to difficult six-mile hike on the main New Hampshire branch of the Appalachian Trail, where nine-year-old Trisha McFarland was to spend Saturday with her older brother Pete and her recently divorced mother. When she wanders off to escape their constant bickering, then tries to catch up by attempting a shortcut through the woods, Trisha strays deeper into, into a wilderness full of peril and terror, especially when night falls. Trisha has only her wits for navigation, only her ingenuity as a defense against the elements, only her courage and faith to withstand her mounting fear. For solace, she tunes her Walkman to broadcast of Boston Red, so Red Sox games and the gritty performance of her hero, number 36, relief pitcher Tom Gordon. And when her radio's reception begins to fade, Trisha imagines that Tom Gordon is with her. Her key to surviving an enemy known only by the slaughtered animals and mangled trees in its wake. And that is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. This is by Stephen King. Alright, next up we have got Others by James Herbert. From the master of horror, James Herbert's Others. Private investigator Nicholas Dismas is hired to track down a missing baby stolen away at birth. He finds himself immersed in a grim underworld of lies and deceit. His investigations ultimately lead him to a mysteriously located place with a seemingly innocent name of perfect rest, a nursing home where the elderly can live out their days in peace. But appearances can be deceptive, and Dismas discovers the shadowy presence of the others lurking in the hidden rooms and passages of perfect rest. His own dark heart is called into question in the events that follow, and in an astonishing and spectacular finale, Dismas finally resolves the enigma of his existence and answers the disturbing question, Who and what are the Others? And that is Others by James Herbert. Alright, next up we have got A Prayer for the Dying. And this is by Steve, uh, Stewart, excuse me, Stuart Onan. Set in Friendship, Wisconsin, just after the Civil War, A Prayer for the Dying tells of a horrible epidemic that is suddenly and gruesomely telling the, excuse me, killing the town's residents and setting off a terrifying paranoia. Jacob Hansen, 
Friendship Sheriff, Undertaker and Pastor is soon overwhelmed by the fear and anguish around him and his sanity begins to fray. Dark, poetic, and chilling, Stuart O'Nan's A Prayer for the Dying examines the effect of madness and violence on the morality of a once decent man. And that is A Prayer for the Dying by Stuart O'Nan. All right, next up we have got what appears to be a short story collection. And this is Demons, Freaks, and Other Abnormalities by Michael Lamo. Demons. A western town has dreadful plans for all those who stumble in for a visit. A priest battles an ancient evil in effort to preserve a small South American villa. Two Florida-bound college students stop in for a fill-up and get more than just gas for their money. Freaks. A man earns more than just a living by exploiting strange and horrible pictures on the internet. Two deranged homeless men battle for supremacy on the street. A New York City cop discovers just how far infants will go in order to survive. Abnormalities. It's suddenly storming outside the quick mart, but something other than rain is falling. A young man wishes to confess something horrible. Unfortunately, God's in a real bad mood today. A neighboring hotel room yields strange thumping sounds and a faint voice summoning a, qu a guest toward the presence within. And if you get the digital edition, there is a story called The Chicken Man. And I don't have a synopsis for that one. Anyway, that is... Let me go all the way back up here. <laughs> uh, Demons, Freaks, and Other Abnormalities. And that is by Michael Lamo. And that is going to do it for the year 1999. So, like I always say, thank you very much for watching, and take care, and stay scared. Bye-bye.